Welcome to One Million Cups. I'm George Brooks. And hopefully if I keep talking, it might get quiet. Yeah, it worked. I'm George Brooks. I'm a volunteer here with One Million Cups, along with Mike, John, and Melissa. We uh, are the community organizers here at One Million Cups, and we work to bring in entrepreneurs each week, the same time, same place, every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. here at Kauffman Foundation. We want to say a huge thank you to Kauffman yet again for letting us use their space. Some housekeeping things, um, please be respectful and take your coffee cups back. Um, the coffee is awesome, and we're glad that it's provided for you guys and keep you guys caffeinated and awake this morning. But we just ask that you clean up after yourself. Uh, definitely make sure to check out um, the sponsors for the coffee, Thou Mayest, and the tea, Hugo Tea, as well, to, uh, to support those guys. Local entrepreneurs, we love it, we love it, we love it. Who's here for the first time? Cool. Love it. So every week we get a chance to get together to have a platform that allows us to do an educational um, look at the entrepreneurs that are in Kansas City and have a conversation between us and them and then you get to really talk back to them. And that's the exciting part. Every week we get together, it's six minutes of presentation from each entrepreneur and we cut it off as quickly as possible at six minutes. It's very difficult sometimes, but we try to cut it off right at six minutes and then you get 20 minutes of Q&A to ask them questions about where their business is at, how they got to where they are, um, what struggles they've gone through, because hopefully you're entrepreneurs as well and are having some of the same questions or even may have some insight on how you, you did it yourself. So um, a few reminders, um, just uh, from a social media standpoint, we did update our one, at One Million Cups to be at One Million Cups KC because we're in so many cities now. I think we're in 16 or 17 cities now. Nate. Back in the back here has been traveling. Raise your, wave, Nate. Hey. Um, he's been traveling all over the nation, launching new cities. By the uh, end of the, the year, we were ch uh, challenged to try to get into 20 cities. It sounds like we'll way surpass that. So we're very excited that One Million Cups is, we're spreading the love all over the nation and maybe beyond soon. So in order to facilitate each city having their own Twitter handle, please do at One Million Cups KC, and you'll get to be up there with their big Twitter wall. So I want to uh, stop talking and get on to the entrepreneurs. Uh, first up, we're gonna flip these. We have uh, Red Dirt up this morning. So I got a chance to meet these ladies when they were actually in my office, uh, having a, a bigger conversation about kind of um, what it means to be an organization that goes beyond just the, the profits. And um, they have a great story. They have, uh, what they do really speaks to my heart because it touches technology and it touches art, and it touches a real need of, of really solving a world problem. So I want to invite up Christina and Don and give them a warm One Million Cups welcome. All right, good morning, I'm Christina Eldridge. And I'm Don Taylor, and we are the founders of Red Dirt. So I want to tell you a little story about how we came to be. Um, both Don and myself have traveled to the red dirt of Africa to do volunteer work. Don works um, in an orphanage in Uganda, and I've had the privilege to travel uh, and direct three medical missions to the country of Mali, West Africa. And I have a lot of stories, but one from my first trip stuck with my heart, and that was my little friend uh, Famusa, who I met. This little boy came out from his village and he was obviously very sick. In fact, he had diarrhea running down his legs. And it didn't take us long to deduce that he had a waterborne illness because he was drinking from a well that looked like this. Right. Um, so they had a closed top hand pump well in the village, but it was broken. So we figured out it would take about 800 US dollars to fix it. So I came back to Kansas City, to my community, asked people to pitch in, we wired the money over, and the next year when I went back again, I got a big hug from Famusa, who was happy and healthy little boy, looking a lot better. So um, in 2012, Don and I had both returned from trips over there, and we started talking about what are some better ways to solve these huge world problems, because charity alone cannot do it. Don and I both have long careers in nonprofit, and we know that the grind of fundraising every year doesn't get to solutions. So we had to find something that was scalable. What is scalable? Commerce. 
We thought this would be an appropriate quote to share with you this morning, given our surroundings and given the incredible legacy that Mr. Kaufman left us to inspire entrepreneurs. So what makes Red Dirt an uncommon company? Well, we launched in April as a social impact company, which means we are for profit, for good. We make money and we do good in the world. We regard our customers as the philanthropist in our uncommon business model, and we're inspired by other social impact companies that you've probably heard of on the national scale. Tom Shoes, Warby Parker Eyewear, for example. We are a fashion and accessories brand. We are making beautiful products designed by artists. We exist in an online shop, reddirtshop.com, and occasionally we have a pop-up shop like our incredibly successful uh, Plaza Art Fair booth last weekend. How many of you went to Plaza Art Fair last weekend? All right, we probably saw you. Red Dirt's first product is cases for the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 5. Well, why would we choose cell phone cases? Well, we wanted to have a product that was highly visible, in your hand every day, easy to brand, an affordable price point, and able to be designed by artists. So why would artists be so important to our business model? Well, with the vibrant arts community here in Kansas City, we recognized early on in our discussions that having artist involvement would be essential to making our products distinctive in the marketplace. So as you can see, we offer a wide variety of images and color palettes and genres designed to appeal to a wide audience. And our artists are truly collaborators with us. We work with lots of artists from Kansas City, probably many you recognize up there, as well as artists from around the world. And we work with them to select a great design, and then we cross-promote our audiences with their audiences to build both of our fan bases. And every Monday, we unveil a new design. So as Christina described, access to clean, safe drinking water is the single biggest game changer in the life of an impoverished person, person living in the developing world. 780 million people, that's about one in nine, lack access to clean water. That's pretty staggering. And that brings us to the other key component of our uncommon business model, which is our partnership with water.org. Water.org is a nonprofit organization based here in Kansas City, and they were co-founded by Gary White from here in town and Matt Damon, the actor. Did somebody get Matt his coffee back here in the second? Is he back? Okay, good, you're good, okay, great. Two sugars, all right, just kidding. Um, so they are, what's remarkable about, about Water.org is they are really a world leader in what they do. They have developed a lot of innovative solutions to bring uh, people clean water access points to their homes in about a dozen developing countries around the world. So it made them really a perfect partner uh, with us for, for Red Dirt. Now when a Red Dirt customer purchase one of the, purchases one of our phone cases, $5 of that purchase goes straight to Water.org. $5 equates to clean water, for one person for one year. $25 provides clean water for one person for life. So Red Dirt customers are providing life-giving and life-changing clean water to people around the world, including countries like Haiti, which is the photo you see on the right. Okay, so let's touch a bit more on this business model of for-profit and for-good. These are, this is not a zero-sum equation. You can have both, and in fact, they both enhance each other. 30% of U.S. consumers today say that uh, they identify with being green, um, social justice, health and welfare of others. And I'll ask this room, I know it's a little skewed, how many of you guys um, go out and purchase Valmius Coffee, Broadway, Roastery, oddly correct? Right. A lot, that's good. And not just because it tastes better than Folgers, but you guys probably, it means something to you because it's local, maybe because they uh, pay a fair trade on their beans, right? That's the wave of consumerism in America. Secondly, investors are ready to get behind these types of companies. I know we read a lot about um, investment in Kansas City. We have tons of startups and we have no funding. Well, we found the opposite. When Don and I um, offered our seed round of funding, we were uh, oversubscribed and had to turn people away, which I do still pinch myself <laughs> when I say that. We were really lucky. But uh, investors are willing to get behind it as well. Um, so very quickly, the future of Red Dirt, three things. First is more products. As Don explained, the um, phone cases were our entree to market because it was different, it was unusual, it's kind of a hallmark. But now we can go into more um, generic types of products like apparel. So, 
we're always going to be involving artists in what we design. So in the next month or two, look for us to release new t-shirts uh, with really awesome artist designs. Second, uh, we had a number of stores uh, contact us and they want us to be in their retail shops. So we're walking now down the road of wholesale. And finally, we're going to be doing more employment uh, in developing communities. Uh, right now, if you order one of our cases, you get this really pretty fabric drawstring bag that your case is delivered in. These are made by tailors we employ in West Africa. Because if there's one thing that we really believe in is in the dignity of commerce to break the cycle of poverty. Just like in America, people don't need handouts, they need a job, right? So we're gonna be traveling to Central uh, America looking for textiles and to uh, East Africa for leather goods. Okay, so to close, where's George? He's gonna get me off the stage here. Uh, to close, we don't do sales, but uh, we wanted to offer our comrades here at One Million Cups 25% off. If you want to order up until uh, midnight tomorrow, 1MC is your coupon code, which we'll, you'll be able to remember. Um, and I just wanna finish with a challenge. Um, you guys are here, I've met a lot of you before. You guys are here because you don't just care about your own companies, you care about our communities, you care about the impact your business is making. And I am asking you to find what your passion is that lies within your business. For us, it's making beautiful products that carry the story of clean water for all. Whatever your passion is, what lies in your business, find a way to do some good with it. Thank you. All right, great job. Let's go ahead and open up for, uh, for questions. Good morning. Um, I hope everyone in here goes out and uh, looks at Pound 2030 now, the Social Goods Summit in New York just ended after three days. Mm -hmm. And on the second day, they had a video from India of the Life Buoy campaign. It's help a child to reach the age of five. And they had on there that a child dies from dirty water every 15 seconds. Um, and so this ties in well with that. Um, and what I want to share with you is a story and then see how we can, the question will be, how can we do this in Kansas City? But down in Pensacola, I was at the airport and I asked the cab driver there, I said, hey, what do people usually tip you? He said, some don't, but when they do, it, um, it was the parking lot service. He said, we pull all our tips anyway and we use them to put in clean wells around the world. So that's what these taxi drivers, these shuttle drivers do that. So, and I said, well, you should put that on the side of your van because I gave them a bigger tip because of it. So the question is, how could we do something like that? How could we take something that people, you know, a restaurant chain or a, or a commodity or service and tell people, your tips go to Red Dirt Now, go to help a child reach the age of five, for example? Right. Well, um, I think that's what we're, we're doing with our products. We're choosing products that people are going to buy every day anyway. I don't know why everybody's so excited about the gold iPhone 5S. You're just going to cover it with a case anyway. Like, you, nobody's going to see it, right? So. Well, that's what we're doing is try, we tried to find, uh, settle on products that people were going to buy anyway and add this component to it. So I think uh, your idea of the tips is awesome and I think that you should take it out to uh, restaurants or uh, I don't think there's enough taxi drivers in, in Kansas City, but um, every little bit helps. Um, I, I think that um, Don mentioned that um, with $25, water.org can give someone clean water for life. It's a bargain. <laughs> Great. Talk to George about it. <laughs> Got a question for you over here. Talk a little bit about sales channels. I know this is a com fairly competitive market. How do you stand out in that? It's a great question, and it's the question we asked ourselves day one. Like cell phone cases, okay, they're ubiquitous. You can get them at the kiosk in the mall, you can get them online, you can get them in the Apple store. But you know, as we were starting to research around, and, and at the time when we started 371 days prior to our April 3rd launch, yes, we were counting days, um, you know, we would go to the Apple store, we would go to these different places and look, and we didn't really know a brand name. I don't know how many of you could name off a brand name of, of cell phone cases. Um, so we, we figured that there was room for something distinctive. And as I mentioned, the artist involvement and the tie-in with water.org were our two kind of uh, key service selling points to make our products distinctive. So that's how we stand out. We think we're priced competitively. Our cases are $37 each, any design, any phone type. Um, and then with that $5 portion going to water.org. So that's a great question. And you know, in terms of sales channels, you know, we started as an online shop. We're still an on online shop, um, but we are happily going to investigate the wholesale route to get into some probably local stores first and then um, see what happens after that. You know, and I'll follow up on that too. Um, 
as Don said, we're priced competitively with other, um, maybe not the mall kiosk, but with other higher end cases like um, Zazzle or Encase, some of those that you can order online, the ones you can personalize with your kid's photo. Um, so we are priced at that, and, some, and we actually kind of come below because we do free shipping. But um, if, has anybody heard of John Mackey's uh, book that he came out with? He's this co-founder of, or the co-CEO of Whole Foods called Conscious Capitalism. Um, they did some studies to show that you, know, you offer two people the same product, same price, and one has a social good attached to it, and obviously people are going to choose that. And in fact, um, social good companies over a 10-year period of time outperform uh, companies that don't nine to one. Great questions. We have a question for you here. Hi, I'm just curious what your current customer looks like today and are they who they who you thought they would be and are they who you anticipate them being in the future? Who has an iPhone? <laughs> You're our customer. Oh good, we just made today's quota. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Truly, um, you know, we actually, have, if you go on our site, you'll see actually a third phone type offered, which is the Samsung Galaxy 3. Because at the time we were forming our business plan, the Samsung Galaxy 3 was the number one selling phone in the entire world. So that was kind of like, obviously we'll do that. And we knew, you know, iPhones would be important as well. So um, in, in terms of a demographic, we're still kind of studying that. We, we skew pretty heavily female, although we've made a very conscious effort, and I could click back to some of the pictures, um, to have, a more, have more male, uh, you know, focused designs, kind of this plaid, with this, uh, we have a black one down here on the bottom right next to the shark called the Executive. It was named very intentionally. Uh, we actually have some bankers and lawyers that say, oh, that's still a little racy for me. I don't know if I can handle that. Um, but, uh, you know, I figure if you take the shark, someone, one of our volunteers said, you, you bring that shark case into a business meeting, it's, it's done. You're the boss. I mean, you've got a shark on your phone. <laughs> so thank you, Stefan, wherever you are. Um, so, you know, you'll see, you know, again, a range. Um, when we came out with the Scribe case, Scribe is a local graffiti artist here, the rabbit on the hamster, um, very well known, and we knew that would bring a certain type of customer. And then we knew we couldn't then the next week sell them flowers. We had to kind of come back with something else that the Scribe fans were going to like. So we've come out with uh, Jeremy Model, the Mad case, he designs for kid robots, Psych, Phil Schaefer, another kind of urban kind of street artist kind of guy. So we're trying to kind of respond and, and kind of watch our sales trends, and I think we're, it's kind of still a, a trend in, pro, in process. Question for you over here. Hi, gals. Hi. So um, I had started my own social entrepreneurship as well, and so you know I'm passionate about water because that was built into my give back. My question for you is, what is your plan for when you go wholesale, when you plan to do that? What is your plan for maintaining your $5 give back model? Because I found that a huge challenge. I had a commodity and I just couldn't, I couldn't compete. So I was just curious to know what your plan was. Right. Um, our plan is to keep it in place. I mean, this is what we've uh, built our company around and this is why um, people join our Red Dirt family, as we say. So um, yes, you've got to pull your, your profit and your pricing back, but it's in exchange for me uh, uh, meeting a much wider market, but that will absolutely always stay the same. And I think we feel pretty confident, at least starting locally with some retailers that have approached us. I, I feel like we'll be able to ha be kind of of like mind with some of these retailers and they'll be able to understand that we've got this commitment to the $5 per case and you know be able to kind of negotiate from there. So I have a question real quick over here on your right. Um, I would get a chance to talk about this a little bit. I'm, I'm curious if you could tell the story of the, what seem, the room seems to respond really well to is physical products. That happens. Or oh, the people get excited about something physical. They can touch it. Mm -hmm. What did it take to get these made? I mean, where, where do you get them made? How, how are they made? Um, you know, it's not as easy as going down and, you know, buying a WordPress theme and throwing up a website. It's you're building something. How'd that happen? Yeah, I think it is I'm not. Yeah. I mean, do you see the gray hairs here in dark circles? I think I'm on record as saying, how hard could it be to make a phone case? She did. She actually did say that. In the Don't beginning. listen to me. Do not listen to me. It's really hard. It's really, really hard. We spent months sourcing, and we ended up with a really trusted uh, vendor in Sunnyvale, California, of all places. We went through Canada, came down to Sunnyvale, um, and then we do a portion of the work. 
uh, the etching, we etch our logo, laser etch our logo on the sides of the cases, that's done locally. Uh, which we're thrilled about. Um, and we would actually be happy to have, if we could find the type of printing, we have really high quality printing because the art piece, the art element is so important to us. We want that printing to be really great. So it's a, it's a very complicated process called dye sublimation. It's a heat transfer process. And if we haven't been able to find that locally or even regionally, and if we could, if anyone's got a tip, we'll take it. Um, so making them uh, took quite a while, but we're happy with the product that we have now. Yeah, I think that I could probably write a dissertation now too on the problem of manufacturing in America. And if yep. the president really wants to um, you know, put a fire and make us a, a manufacturing belt again, it's open yourself to the small business owner. Because most manufacturers, uh, at least in regionally as, as we were going, they don't want to look at you unless you're you know, creating millions of pieces off the first order. So um, it was really difficult and working connections to try to find uh, a manufacturer to work with us. Question for you right up here. I'm curious about how you work with the artists. Do you find them? Do they find you? Do they get paid? Um, good, because I, I am an artist myself, and everyone wants you to do it for free. So that's wonderful to hear that you're they're getting something out of it as well. But I would love to hear about how you work with the artists. Sure, my pleasure. Um, we started off, again, working connections. Um, I have a background in working at art museums, and so I know a lot of local artists, and as does Christina. And so, yes. We knew day one we would pay the artists, so we do. We pay them a modest stipend to license their work uh, for the cases um, with some degree of exclusivity. And um, we have found that 99.9% .9 of them uh, jump at the chance once we, once we connect with them. Um, because we've heard, had artists tell us over and over again, oh my gosh, I can use my artistic talent to do good in the world. If you go on our website, each of our artists, all 40 some odd we have currently, has their own page on our website. And we interview each artist and we ask them, one of the questions after what's your, on your desert island playlist is, um, why did you want to become a Red Dirt artist collaborator? And we have, we've had some just amazing responses to that. Uh, one of the most pithy is uh, from Mike Savage. Here's his, the first two cases there, you probably know him local. He just said, I believe, because I believe. That's why he wanted to be a Red Dirt artist. Um, and that is really, has been really gratifying to us. So the stipend that we pay uh, for the, for the um, limited use agreement, and then the cross promotion can take all kinds of forms. Some of our artists are a lot more um, active online and have a huge online presence, not just on their own website, but lots of social media platforms, other online marketplaces for artists. Um, and we try to look for those folks now. We've gotten a little savvier um, about going after artists that have a major online presence. Um, but we signed artists from Glasgow, Scotland, and from um, Indonesia, yes. Threadless. Yeah, for Threadless. That's the last one in the Uganda. second you right. And Uganda. Two of our cases, and I'm trying to see oh, if they're record. Here. They may, they may be outside. Um, two of our artists uh, are boys from the orphanage where I volunteer in Uganda, a boy named Opio Nikki and a boy named Brian Okecha. And we bought their designs with the same stipend that we pay all the other artists. And those, that stipend paid for their school fees for the year. They're roughly in high school, our equivalent of high school. Um, so again, we've got, that makes four international artists actually with the two boys from Uganda. Got a question from the live stream. Mindy asks, Fantastic idea. How much have you been able to give thus far to water.org? That's a good question. Um, actually, we have been, um, things have been going really, really well, better than we, than we thought. And um, watch the news for the future because we're going to be doing a big uh, uh, press followed uh, check presentation up here before the end of the year. Well, I, I, I think there might be a question here, but I, I, I have another one real quick. Um, oh, okay, perfect. All huh, right. Um, so <clears throat> what are, tell, tell me a little bit about, so you mentioned the fact that you guys were, were able to, to get money or investment. Um, I think that's a big conversation in this room. We could probably have a longer conversation about that. Just briefly talk about what that experience was like perfect. and uh, where you found successes and failures there. Sure. Um, when we looked at, um, start doing this, we, you know, there's so many ways that a business can finance themselves. They can, um, you know, go off the equity in their home, uh, you know, max out credit cards, you know, because everybody wants to retain their equity, right? Uh, but uh, Don and I are both single moms of two kids who require tuition, we own homes, we didn't want to risk any of that. Um, so we actually were going to go to Kickstarter. 
And we had sort of a small party with about 40 people that we knew would have the means and would, would like to be involved in this kind of thing. They're uh, uh, business leaders, um, but they were also philanthropists. So we thought that this um, married that really well. And when we gave a presentation, it was to start the conversation. And what happened is that people, um, a, a handful of people individually contacted us and said, I love this idea. I don't want to give you $2,000. I want to be part of this company. And so that's where we decided to do this offering. Um, we have people from multiple states. Um, and I, I think probably everybody wants to know, well, how do you find the people? OK, so Don and I are a little bit, uh, we have a little bit of advantage in that we've worked in nonprofit for many years. And we know a lot of the business philanthropists here in town. Um, but it was still working connections. You've got to work your connections to find people. I think that um, where Kansas City could go forward is in creating more formalized groups of these people who are not part of equity firms, but uh, they're willing to invest. They're, they're, they're certified investors and want to invest their money, especially here in local companies. I would love to see Coffin Foundation do some um, uh, give some sort of structure uh, to people like that because the money is here and. You know, Kansas City is uh, per capita, typically the, the uh, most philanthropic city in America, and they'd like to support what happens at home. Question for you right back here. Yep. So I actually don't have a question, but I just wanted to say thank you to these two women, because both of them are mentors of mine, and it's been really a blessing to see this business grow. And I just wanted to let you all know what you see is who they are, and um, they're just really thorough and wonderful and um, have made a big impact in my life. And just a little plug on the cases. I'm actually a customer. I have the one with the plane. And I've dropped my phone many times. And I've had it for maybe about three months. And it, it's very clean. And I just think that the cases are great. So buy one. Thank, Thank you, Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Thank you. OK. I think we're about out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Nate, I can't not let Nate have a question, though. He's only here like once a let year. Nate. So. <laughs> here comes Nate's question. Well, this is kind of fun. Um, it all kind of comes full circle kind of with Dawn, because the first time I encountered Dawn, I was doing an internship at the Kemper Art Museum. Yep. And uh, when I saw when you guys first applied to present in April, I was like, Dawn, I know her. This is amazing. <laughs> this is going to be a great business. Um, but we, we had had you guys on the docket, and we caught up this morning, and we were like, you know, we wanted to let you guys run for a little bit. Right. And so I guess my question, it's kind of a two-part question, is what's the greatest thing that you've learned since you launched your company that you could share with aspiring entrepreneurs? And then the second question, signature question, which I think you guys already hit, and if people know, but what can we do as a community to really rally the troops and make sure to support you? The, okay. Yeah, the uh, first question, was, that's such a huge question. Like, I could go on for hours about, you know, the greatest things that I've learned. Um, uh, but it's funny, I'll take it back to Jordan, who's so sweet. We did not plant her, but free t-shirts for Jordan. Um, uh, she asked me a question, too. She's like, what is the lesson you have to pass on? And I said, you know, if we had, um, if we'd known how hard it was going to be, we never would have done it. And so ignorance is bliss, and I think every, probably every entrepreneur or business owner um, uh, does that, but it, it's kind of the same answer. People ask me all the, they say all the time to me, they're like, oh, I really want to go to Africa and volunteer, or India, or Bangladesh, and I always say the hardest part is just deciding to do it. Then things will fall into place after that. So whatever, I know a lot of you are just ruminating ideas about your businesses right now, just do it. You just have to decide to do it. Exactly. Okay. One of the, I wouldn't say the greatest thing, one of the most real things is that sleep is overrated. So I'll tell you right now. But um, what could the community do quickly? We exist primarily online, and we are on every, just about every one of the big four social media platforms. Please follow us. Add your comments. Share a case that you really like. Share it with your friends. Um, that could really help us. And again, that printer, that regional printer, dye sublimation, if you think you have something um, that could help us out in that regard, we'd love to hear about it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you all. All right, great stuff. Okay, before we bring up Andrew, we have some announcements. Who, is, uh, who do we have? Perry from IKC. And Sarah.
Good morning. My name is Perry Pichetti. I'm the President and CEO of IIII Corporation, and I'm here to represent the Ambassador Committee for IKC, the Unconference. What exactly is an Unconference, or IKC? Well, as you all know, there's a lot of really great business activity going on here in Kansas City. What IKC focuses on is creating those serendipitous collisions that innovators, entrepreneurs, investors, and connectors all can participate in, pretty much everyone in this room. What's unique about IKC is that attendees get to submit and vote on those topics that they're most passionate about. Those topics become the agenda for the day. It'll probably be a little unusual, might even be a little chaotic, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. Anyone could attend, and so we're here to invite you. Sarah and I will be there. Um, the rest of the ambassador committee will be there, and Kaufman's very, very own Katie Peterson will be there. I think it's going to be a really exciting day. So save the date. It's Thursday, 3 October, um, 8.30 to 6.30, and I think it's the uh, Block World headquarters. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, tickets are on sale. So if you would uh, follow the Yellow Brick Road, and uh, I think Kate, uh, Sarah has a few additional information uh, highlights to share with you. Thank you. Yeah, actually, I wanted to point out that we have a discount code today. So um, it's COF, K-A-U-F-F-15, -F and you'll be able to get a little bit of a discount just for attending today. So um, go ahead and put that in on the Eventbrite page. Um, I wanted to point out the uh, a few highlights. The Unmentor program, um, it sounds a little bit weird, Unmentor. We have one-on-one -on -one sessions, but we also have our Unmentors um, pretty much injected throughout the day. So. The normal sessions, um, you can be having a conversation and you might sit, be sitting next to Judy Syndicuse of Capital Innovators or uh, Pat Doherty of Saturday Capital, Kelly Perneau. Um, we've got accounting and finance people. We've got marketing people, Ryan O'Connell from Influence and Company, if any of you know him. Um, and then I also wanted to kind of highlight a couple of the ideas that have been submitted so far. We've been excited to see the community uh, bringing some really great ideas that we probably would have never thought of, which is exactly the point that we wanted to happen. So anything from, pretty much everything and anything on marketing is going to be there. Open data, crowdsourcing, um, makers, lean startup growth models, um, unleashing creativity, productivity hacks. I mean, there, it just, the list goes on. So please just go to the site, check it out. We actually are opening the voting um, tomorrow online. So even if you aren't attending, you can go and vote. So please attend, but if you, if you want to vote anyway, you can. And then just wanted to point out, our closing party ends with the world premiere of the Tech Trek Glass documentary um, pr uh, produced by some in-town companies. So thanks, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Sarah. If you've not been to an unconference, I'd strongly recommend it. They're a lot of fun. Uh, let's see who else do we have. Betty Ann, Santa Maria. Tell us about cocktail, Tech Cocktail. What's that? Well, you don't have to stand behind there. You can stand right here. Good morning. I'm Betty Ann Santa Maria. I am the lead IT recruiter at DST Systems. I am also the national, well, the KC ambassador um, for Tech Cocktail. We're having an event on October 17th at Boulevard Brewery. Um, Tech Cocktail is a national organization that tours the United States. Um, and bring has networking events and different mixers and conferences and their goal is to bridge the gap between entrepreneurs in whatever city and um, the local IT community and large companies like DST Systems. Um, this year um, Argus is the main sponsor for the pro the um, uh, mixer, and I see Mary and Perry from Triple they're also a sponsor, and Kauffman Foundation is also a sponsor. I'm here to employ um, individuals here to attend, um, to apply to present, which is free, um, and potential sponsors. The more sponsors we have, the bigger and better the event could be. Um, right now, the tickets are available at tech.co, T-E-C-H dot C-O. Um, or you could go to Eventbrite and purchase a ticket, and if you do it now, the tickets are $10. Um, that gets you admission into the event and also as much free beer as you want to drink from Boulevard, so that's a big plus. Um, the startups, 
the IT startups that would present um, will be showcased in kind of a trade show fashion, if you will. Um, and they will have an opportunity to present their product or project, if you will. Um, there are three prerequisites for the startups to present. Um, they have to be an actual company with a website or a product, a physical product, um, to present and to share information about. Um, they have to be in Kansas City, and they have to have um, less than $100,000 in seed or startup money. One of the things that Tech Cocktail does, again, in trying to bridge the gap between IT startups locally and entrepreneurs um, locally in the local community is to try to um, facilitate investment. So there will be angel investors there. Um, Tech Cocktail is, again, a national organization that has a lot of connections with um, companies outside of the Kansas City area that are looking to invest in startups. So it's just a great opportunity to kind of get your arms around, you know, who are the IT startups in the KC area, um, what are they doing, and for those um, startups to potentially um, get some funding to kind of help them get off the ground. Right now, we have six hey, startups that will be presenting. Betty Ann, I'm going to have to cut you off. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> and last year we had 12, so if you're interested, let me know. I'll be in the back of the room afterward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Betty Ann. One last real quick announcement. Hey, if you've got a startup or a small business that's less than three years old that can scale up really big, we want to hear from you. So go to 1millioncups.com, click on Kansas City, and say, I want to present. It lands up to our hopper, and we review them just about every Monday. So isn't that right? How many have we had, Nate? Come through. We were just talking about this the other day. How many presenters have we had? Used to be 148. 148. So we always need new companies so that we can have another 148, whatever that comes up to. I can't do math in my head. Um, all right. So we heard from Red Dirt. We heard about really cool uh, giving campaigns. That's awesome. Our next presenter, Andrew Stan Stanley, uh, has a software as a service that helps nonprofits organize their volunteer and organize their volunteer efforts. Did I say that right? Yeah. Close enough? That's great. All right, let's get you up here. All right. Please welcome Thank Andrew you. Stanley from Volunteer Mark. Thanks. All right, I'm glad to be here. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot to have the support of the community. Um, my company is Volunteer Mark, and we are an online tool to help volunteers and nonprofit organizations. And uh, we manage volunteer hours, but we really are about maximizing the volunteer experience. Um, so I just want to talk really quickly about a timeline of kind of how we are, um, have gotten to where we're at today. So it started in 2010 um, from a personal experience. I've been a volunteer uh, my whole life, high school, college, very involved. And after graduating and moving to Kansas City, I wanted to get started here in uh, Kansas City, but there wasn't one place to go where I could find volunteer opportunities. So I find from a friend an organization, uh, go to their website, give them a call, try to email, back and forth, phone tag, uh, finally get a hold of the volunteer coordinator, and they tell me when to show up. I come to inner city Kansas City, ready to volunteer, and uh, show up, and the person at the front desk uh, explains to me that the volunteer coordinator is out sick that day, they don't know who I am, and uh, unfortunately they can't use my help. So I don't want that to happen to other volunteers because they're people that are looking to get involved and I want to make that process easier so that more people can give back. Uh, so I begin a conversation with nonprofit organizations and uh, find out, I send out like an email to about 100 nonprofits and 80 people write back and they all say, yes, I have this problem. You know, how can you help me manage volunteers more effectively? Because it's very important to nonprofit organizations to engage their volunteers. So I build a prototype. And then I meet the Halo Foundation, who is a local organization here in Kansas City, extremely efficient. They work with a lot of volunteers. They're tech savvy, really great. They do a lot of things really well, but they recognize they can do better. And they give me a lot of great ideas and feedback, and we begin a partnership with them. Uh, then I go to Startup Weekend uh, here in Kansas City, and I was going there with the intent of you know, talking about Volunteer Mark and getting more support, but I was shy. I didn't present my idea. Um, I joined another team called Where's My Twin, and that's where I meet Venkat Dulapali, 
And we work as a team. I do the front end design. He does the back end development. We work really well together. I tell him about Volunteer Mark. He loves the idea. Uh, a couple months later, he joins as our CTO and part owner of the company. Um, then, you know, really trying to utilize the lean startup methodology, we build our most viable product, our MVP, and we get that out into the customers. And we start working with more organizations and, and start learning from users, you know, how, are their, how is their experience with the app and how are they using it. Um, finally, 2013, I quit my day job, go full time, um, really building a lot of new features and focusing in on, you know, how is our product unique and where do we fit in the market. Um, and then we join the Spark Lab Kansas City uh, Business Accelerator Program, and we focus on transitioning from being a product to a company, and really rounding out uh, all aspects of our operation and, and making a formal advisory board. We hire Katie Martino, who is in charge of customer service and mar marketing, and we really ramp up our development. And uh, that brings us to basically where we're at today, where we have launched, we've beta tested, um, the, the website is up and running, we have nonprofits on it, getting a lot of feedback here locally and, and then uh, nationally as well. Um, through my conversations with nonprofit, I find out that a lot of nonprofits aren't connected with the other nonprofits in Kansas City. And so we're creating something kind of inspired by One Million Cups, where the Archer Foundation, uh, each first Wednesday of the month, will bring together the nonprofit leaders so that they can talk about uh, volunteer management, share best practices and tips, and uh, foster that uh, collaboration so that um, you know, we're better working together. Um, also, we have a public uh, launch event coming up, and it's going to be a fun event, and also bringing together nonprofits uh, and volunteers so that you can kind of get information and get plugged in and uh, have a lot of fun. So I can tell you more information about that. I love your support. Um, so now I want to uh, quickly show you some screenshots of the actual app. So this is a look at our home page here, and it's a listing of the volunteer opportunities. Uh, that thing that was missing in 2010, I've created that. So that now, you know, you can look based on your location, based on if you're looking for a one-time volunteer commitment or, or something more um, weekly, you can sort through it and find your favorite uh, organization and uh, volunteer opportunity. You can drill down and uh, learn more about that opportunity. You can sign up for a specific shift. You can share it with your friends on social media. Uh, you can find out more about the organization. So when a volunteer signs up to apply for the opportunity, it sends that notification to the organization. And we're now looking at the uh, nonprofit dashboard, where they can manage all of the opportunities at their organization and really be able to see who their volunteers are and how many volunteer hours they have. And volunteer hours, uh, tracking that accurately is extremely important because nonprofits need that data so that they can apply for grants. And uh, so everything kind of comes in as a notification, and they have the decision if they want to approve or deny the volunteer for the particular sign up. And they can also modify, approve, or deny the volunteer hours. So we're validating service hours uh, for the volunteer and keeping track of that information in a nice, easy interface for the nonprofits. Um, the non the uh, volunteers then also have a dashboard of their own where they can see everything that they've signed up for and have a tool so that they can uh, be organized with their commitments. They can see their pending service hours and uh, also keep track of their approved service hours um, by clicking on the service uh, certificate, which we generate this for them that they can print off. And so the example is like a student has a service hour requirement to graduate from high school. They can print this off and give it to their teacher, and it's all validated through us, and they can uh, just um, scan the QR code to see that it is an authentic certificate. And this makes it a lot easier for anyone that's trying to administer a volunteer program. Maybe it's a small business that has a corporate social responsibility program, or like I mentioned, a school with a service hour requirement. We're making that a lot easier so that they don't have to track down signatures and you know, really question whether or not this was an authentic uh, volunteer experience. So that's the end of my six minutes. I uh, look forward to answering any questions that you guys might have. Good. Questions for Andrew? Is there, oh, wait, there's a question. Hi, I'm curious how you handle or if you've had any situations where volunteers are no-shows. So how do you make sure that you've got good quality volunteers? And then the other thing I'd like to know is some organizations require background checks, so is there a way to facilitate that through this as well? 
Those are two really good questions. And uh, no-shows is a really big problem. And that's why everything's captured through the system. So you can see if somebody signed up for something. And then the nonprofit can write private notes on that person so that they can make a note to themselves to say, hey, they signed up, but they didn't actually follow through. So that they, next time when somebody signs up, they see that information and they can be aware of that. Um, the second thing with background checks, that is um, uh, also something that does apply to a lot of nonprofits. And we are working on uh, expanding this so that it's a document management system as well, so that we can keep track of individual files for the volunteers. So that's a great um, feature idea. Question for you right over here. I love the last part where the schools can validate, because I just had a uh, discussion mm -hmm. with one of my kids this morning about getting all that in. Have you thought about going to the school districts and sharing this, this with them, because I think this is awesome. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I would love to take it to the school districts, um, and, and we have plans to, uh, but right now we want to build up a, a great um, network of nonprofits that are on the system posting their volunteer opportunities, because the more volunteers and nonprofits that are on the system, the more value it's going to have to the schools. So I definitely want uh, any kind of introductions, and uh, I would, I'd be excited to see what, how they receive that. Question over here. What do you need more, volunteers or places to have them volunteer? And have you spoken at all with the Greater Kansas City Chamber Centurions program that it's supposed to be, supposed to be, training the leaders of Kansas City? They're charging thousands of dollars to businesses to join the chamber, and then they're supposed to take the, the best and the brightest young people who work for those law firms and other companies, and they're supposed to be sending them out to the community. Mm -hmm. And this really solves a huge problem. Yeah. Um, so a couple questions there. Um, I think they're equally important. I think it's important to organize the volunteers. We have a, a great volunteerism culture here in Kansas City. Um, so definitely volunteers are important, but um, you know, we can't really help unless the nonprofits are in the system. So we want to make it more efficient for them. And so it, it brings value to the volunteers the more nonprofits we have. So I think they go hand in hand. Um, and then the Centurions, that's a great group, and I have met with them. And um, I'm hopeful to kind of see, um, to hear back from them. But I presented it to them and they liked the idea. Um, but they're kind of unique because they work with other nonprofits and they, and they kind of um, have their own program. And so it's a little bit different than just a nonprofit offering um, volunteer opportunities. So we're working with them to see how we can provide a solution for them. Question for you here in the middle. Oh, sorry. I don't call on people, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Could you explain the revenue part to sustain your product? Absolutely. So um, I really like uh, this whole conversation today with the social enterprise um, because that's what we are, too. Um, we, we do charge for our, our service, and it's very affordable to the nonprofit. So uh, we are charging nonprofits to use our product $49 a month or $499 for the year. Um, and so if you think about all the value that a volunteer brings to an organization and how volunteers become donors themselves, um, really for $500 they're going to get a lot more in return for that investment. Um, and that way we've structured ourselves not as a nonprofit but as a business because uh, we see the value in charging and, and receiving uh, money from customers because that keeps us very focused on providing the best product that we can and not trying to chase down grants and different funding opportunities. Question back here. Uh, what, in relation to branding, what about custom branding um, for a nonprofit? Custom branding? Your product, yeah, like um, in terms of how it's served on the internet to volunteers, I mean. Yeah, um, that's great. Uh, so. So nonprofits will have their own page, and it's just got our footer at the top, um, or our header at the top. And, <laughs> um, and then it's got their logo, all their information, um, but it's hosted on our website. So they don't have to know, you know how to make a, a website or anything like that. We make it really easy that they can have a presence on our website, which will help them drive traffic. And then each, um, each thing that they create on our site, a volunteer opportunity, their uh, organization landing page, it has its own URL that they can then share um, in their own marketing. So they could just uh, send out their email uh, newsletter and have a link back to our website. So we can really integrate really easily with their existing branding. Question right here. How are you different than Volunteer Match? OK, good question. So Volunteer Match is a place where um, people can find volunteer opportunities and, and um, 
different organizations and causes. Um, we do that uh, where you can find volunteer opportunities, but we're really what happens at the end. Once you find the volunteer opportunity, now there's a system that you're a part of where you can communicate back and forth with the organization. So the organization now uh, has a volunteer uh, information and they can write profile, you know, they can write private notes and they can then send targeted emails to the volunteers. So you're really connected. So we really pick up where volunteer match leads off, um, being a system to manage all this information and the data. Question here over your left. Uh, I really like the application. So kind of eating your own cookies. So let's say I want to volunteer to help you. Mm -hmm. How do I help you? Okay. okay. That's the first question. Second, to me, uh, it, it, I think there's a huge market in HR. You know, a lot of businesses would like to, there are people want to give, there are people want to do stuff. And, you know, I saw uh, a big company here in town was doing a kind of a walk thing and it was it was kind of very unorganized. It was very surprising because the company was a te technology business. But I see this would be great for business. I even was thinking intern management, you know, because that's kind of a form of volunteer for a purpose. Mm -hmm. But uh, so anyway, how would I get involved? Uh, you know, if I, got if I got nonprofits, how would I get them connected up? That's a great question. So I did, I passed out a bunch of, of our business cards on your chairs and then in the back there, there's information or just come see me. I'd love to just talk with you guys if you have any ideas. Um, so please come find me and set up a meeting. But if you could, on the back of the business cards, just write you know, somebody that you know at a nonprofit organization um, and help me with that introduction so that I can help uh, the nonprofits be more efficient. That, that's one great way that you can help me is just um, getting more people on the system. Um, and then your um, idea about working with uh, businesses and interns and organizing events. I mean, you're right, there's so much uh, need to kind of organize all of this space. There's a lot of people giving their time, but everyone's time is so important. So we wanna make this very simple, very easy, so that you know, you're not spending your time on our website, but you're actually out there uh, contributing. Um, and so we, we're coming out with a mobile app and that's going to work really great for events because it'll be location based. So, you know, check in at an, at an event like a marathon or something. It's going to be a lot easier now. Um, so, so we're working with those kind of big events. And then also with businesses, you know, we, we can talk to the business and kind of determine what will be the best solution for them as far as, you know, using our network to, to help them with what they're trying to accomplish. Question for you right here. Okay. Andy. Um, those of us in the startup mode know how um, easy it is to be distracted with new shiny objects and opportunities, and I admire your focus. Um, can you talk a little bit about the shift, any shifts that you've made over the last couple of years when you had a particular idea and you ended up then having to purposely change direction? Yeah, I think that's really good. Uh, first of all, I got excited because I'm a volunteer and I was like, man, people love volunteering. Let's make it fun. Let's make it easy. Um, but really, I had to talk to nonprofit. I had to talk to the customer. I had to understand, you know, what is it, what's their pain point and how can I solve that for them? And not just create something that I think is really fun and cool, but actually, you know, provide a service that's meaningful, that, that's, that's improving people's lives. So. Um, it's just important to have lots of conversations with your customers, know your customers, you know, because otherwise you might get distracted and, uh, you know, adding a new feature that's really cool and exciting, but um, it's all about the focus. And so we have a great team. We, we, we're utilizing um, a lot of great resources here in Kansas City. I failed to mention, but we're up on the Startup Village website and people just contact me, you know, how can I get involved? How can I help? And so people are helping me and we're getting lots of advice and lots of, um, you know, work done. Um, by, by the community, so um, I'm just fortunate that you know, we're, we're trying to do a lot, but it seems to be if you just focus on the customer, uh, everything else will kind of fall in place. Question here in the middle. Kind of a follow-up to the previous question before, are you collaborating with any of the churches? Uh, always plenty of volunteers at churches, I would think that would be a good place to to get people like that to help you out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, I, I would love to work with churches. Um, and I know churches a lot have their own volunteer needs, and so they could get signed, signed up and started right away. Um, it's just that introduction piece. And um, sometimes with my own church, um, there, things can uh, take a little bit longer to, to move. Um, and so it just depends on, on the right um, fit. So I, I would love to explore that opportunity. Thank you. Question here in the middle. 
Andrew, congrats. Uh, I use their services and they respond very agilely to improving it. Um, the question about the businesses, David Levinson wrote a book called Everyone Helps, Everyone Wins, and he's the founder of Super Sundays out in California. It would be great if we could do something like Wonderful Wednesdays or Terrific Tuesdays in Kansas City area where we get businesses involved, because in his book he explains that when people volunteer, they're happier and productivity actually goes up, that you give people time off to volunteer and the, every is a win-win situation. So if we could do something like that through Kaufman, through, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, ACE Communities Connecting, where's ACE? TCO? Is that right. <laughs> yes, C Communities Connecting what? What's the, yeah, Communities Connecting Opportunities. There's just so many places in Kansas City that, that we could tap into. I, I agree, and I'm, I'm just one person in a part of this, and I, I'm focused on the technology side, but you're absolutely right. I, I, I wanna see more collaboration and more um, platforms like One Million Cups, but for the nonprofits and the businesses uh, coming together. And uh, I know uh, some other presenters that have been here um, are, are doing really great things with that. Uh, Social Heart, we're working with them. Um, I'm excited about they, what they're doing. Um, there's also uh, um, Stand Up For Good is doing that too. So, um, you know, we are focusing really on a tool to help nonprofits and volunteers, but certainly that can be used um, to help, you know, employees understand, um, you know, their, their commitment to the community and, and their employers to recognize that and they can incentivize them, you know, by matching their volunteer hours with a donation um, and doing some really creative things. So. I'd love to work with anyone that's, that's doing that. Unfortunately, we are a small team, so we're very focused on the technology side, but I'd love to hear the ideas. So a quick question from the live stream. Uh, you're primarily in Kansas City area at the moment, correct? Uh, what is your timeline or plan for going national? Um, that's great. Well, we are, um, we can be launched globally, so we have the technology and the capability to do that. But we're focusing on Kansas City because um, it's really important to have that uh, really close customer service relationship and learn from Kansas City market to see what will work in other cities. Um, so we would like to be in other cities next year um, and really focus in uh, the rest of 2013 on, on understanding you know, how can we maximize the opportunity here in Kansas City. Andrew, I know there are a few more people that have questions, but we are out of time. I want to give you, oh, Nate. Oh, Nate. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> okay. Um, I really liked what you said there, and it kind of hit home, and I'm kind of putting myself uh, out there saying this, but um, one of the most amazing things about One Million Cups and the way it's been able to grow just organically is by empowering new leaders. And you were saying, you know, I'm just one person. Like, I'm doing the technical side. And we, as a community, um, we've been reflecting about that a lot because we don't want One Million Cups to be all things to all people. We want it to be the front door of the startup community uh, in every city that we go to and, and to do that really well. And so uh, Brad Feld this past week as part of Denver Startup Week uh, did a session and he talked about doertocracy. And I just want to share that idea with you guys because it's kind of the... the uh, you know, you don't need permission to start any group. If you're passionate about something, let just let your community know, and you can see so many people want to help you, but instead it's like turning it back around and saying, like, I want to help you. Like, you need to go mm -hmm. start that group for nonprofits, or you need to go start that group for college students or 20-somethings or people who love Kansas City or dogs or whatever it is. Um, I just want to challenge the community here and you know, this isn't a comment, this is just like observing the last year and a half in Kansas City, like let's empower more people and if you're interested in helping out, let us know. I think the Kauffman Foundation and certainly my team on the entrepreneurship team here is interested in supporting you. Uh, we do a lot of that and we love to kick ideas around, but we can't always be the facilitators. So um, that's our challenge to you guys and to the community is uh, let's create a doertocracy and uh, let us know how we can help you. Appreciate that. I think that's very important uh, to help us. And like I said, we have the nonprofit forum that we're starting at Archer Foundation the first Wednesday, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., brown bag. Um, so if you know any nonprofit leaders, um, please have them come to it. It's just very much uh, just that uh, discussion that we can start and see you know, what other ideas people have and how, how we can better support them. Thank you, Andrew. Thank Great you. stuff. All right, that's all the time we have. See you guys here next week.